Hi kids, welcome to Snacky Shack. I'm your host, Tommy Mac. Thank you, thank you very much. We are actually celebrating Memorial Day and we smell people barbecuing, so we're gonna barbecue today. I'm not gonna give away the recipe just yet. If you're wondering why it is now Memorial Day weekend and we had an episode about Memorial Day, well, it's because our computer is very slow and it takes two weeks to upload it to YouTube. So, if you have a fast computer, send it to us. If not, if you're Mac, hey, anybody from Apple watching? Let's talk. I have a very special guest today. It's Torin Green, an old pal of mine. He's done so much stuff, I'm not even gonna start to try to tell you what he's done right now. All right, Joe, let's hear that annoying theme song. Cue the intro, let's go. Torrin's here right now, and here he is. Hey Torrin, what's up Tommy? What's going on? How's it going man? <clears throat> Pretty good, you got a little lemonade there? Oh, you know I got a little vodka nade. Cheers to you, cheers to you. Well man, I'm so glad you were able to make it out to the Snacky Shack. Uh, this is our first episode outside. We thought we weren't gonna be able to do one outside because of the rapture, but uh, that worked out all right. I'm, I'm actually, I'm wearing the jeans that Joey was raptured away in, <laughs> in honor of that episode. Wow, we'll miss yeah. him. Yeah, we'll put a little uh, a little box up here so people can see that and go watch that if they want to watch it. I think it looks like these are for rapture jeans as well. I think those are ripshirt. <laughs> ripshirt, the ripshirt jeans. <laughs> those are the ripshirt jeans. <laughs> man, I don't even know where to start with you. We, we met, what, uh, like 13 years ago? 13 years ago. 13 man. years ago. 1998, October of 98. That's showing our age, I think. But yes. that's okay, it's all right. Uh, we're not getting older, we're getting wiser. Yeah. Wiser. Lots changed since then. A lot, a lot has, a lot has. Uh, we... You came out? What? You never came out. I'm sorry. I'm still in the That's closet. Right. What do you mean? That was the don't other, tell my girlfriend that. That was the dude. other guy. I don't have a girlfriend. Crap. I got no alibi. <laughs> if you want to apply to be my girlfriend, you can... Torn, don't look at me like that. You can't be my girlfriend. That's okay. I'll just keep fading in, fading out. Oh, the, the links are down <laughs> below if you want to apply to be my girlfriend. <laughs> my life sucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, back to, back to your fun life. Um, so... <laughs> So we met, okay, and, and I was in no authority, I believe, at right. the time. Uh, we were touring, we were touring, and um, and you were touring. I was. And we, we, we met, we hung out, we would go to karaoke all the time, we'd do all kinds of fun stuff. And dimples. Dimples. Dimples, dimples absolutely. In Burbank. Hey, Sal. What's up, Sal? We actually, I talked to Sal about doing it on location there. So that would actually be really You want to cool. come for that? I would You should come there for that. Yeah. yeah. That'd be like old, old house. We're gonna do an on-location video at Dimples. Sal's already agreed. We'll go in the kitchen and uh, see Roberto, see what he's cooking up. It'll be fun. That'd be awesome. That will be awesome, and that will happen soon. But back to back to the back to the lecture rat. Hey, can I do this next? I don't know, man. You can certainly dance because when I met him, he was dancing for Hammer. I, I did. I was dancing for Hammer, and I did Soul Train as well. Right. Uh, that was fun. A lot of fun. They fed us. Uh, they paid us actually by feeding us cold chicken and biscuits. That, that's, that, that's seriously what we got paid that's, on Soul Train. That's what we got paid. Yeah, that's what we got paid. Cold chicken and biscuits. The biscuits were cold too. I have no idea what I, I've, I've been going down the wrong path, Tommy. I've been looking for biscuits and cold chicken this whole time. Dude, money? Who needs that, bro? <laughs> chicken and biscuits, dude. And it's cold. Ice cold like these beverages. Uh, well, hey, how's it going? Apparently, I don't need a girlfriend anymore. <laughs> So <laughs> she she saw the link at the bottom. Of the she did. She, I don't know. It takes two weeks to get this up on YouTube, so I don't know how she got the message already. But maybe she she's also a she's a fortune teller. She, she's a soothsayer. She sees the future. Well, nice to meet you, girlfriend. She wore her fancy bra. For she evening. did. I see that. That's <laughs> awesome. I'm very happy. Here's my girlfriend. Ding. Surprise! Said it break. <laughs> Trying to feed me jeans. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Let's get to you. Let's talk about you. You joined a band, Patience Worth. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And uh, with Patience Worth, there was a few different songs that were written, and uh, we ended up getting some attention and so forth. And the band was doing pretty good. Something to Burn was a band that uh, kind of came shortly after that. Um, they were uh, auditioning for singers. I was able to, you know, join those guys, and that was a really good fit. We ended up, you know, writing a lot of great songs and. Uh, 
Eventually, we ended up entering some Battle of the Band competitions at, at a global level. You know, we were battling people from other countries. That it, you know, it was like a bracketed competition. A global level per se. Per se, yeah, right. exactly. Uh, good usage, by the way. We uh, ended up, you know, winning a lot of the bracketed competitions. Finally, getting to the point where we were representing America. We actually flew to Beijing uh, after winning one of these competitions mm -hmm. uh, at this thing called the Midi Festival, which was really cool. A lot of you know pictures and footage. Of Big that. show in China. In China, yeah, that was awesome. Nice. We got to go to like you know the Great Wall and Tiananmen Square and the Forbidden City. So. so what happened there? Now you guys, everything was running along great, and then and then something happened because you left that situation. Basically, um, the situation was was that uh, we had just did the uh, Hong Kong World Battle of the Band. We came back. I was uh, back in a, uh, a local place called Sardo's, which mm -hmm. we, were, we were just like hanging out with some friends, singing some songs, and I think I was singing like a Stone Temple Pilot song and uh, one of my favorite bands. And, right. Uh, awkwardly enough, uh, Scott Weiland walks in. Awkwardly or awesomely. Uh, it, it was pretty cool. Um, Scott came in while I was singing the song. I think it was Weiland you were singing? <laughs> Lever. Lever. Big Empty was the I'm song. I'm funny. <laughs> um, and then after I finished singing the song, he's like, that's, that's a good job there. Did you write that? And I'm like, no. But I know who did. Uh, so we ended up like having a big long conversation um, about uh, my band and so forth, uh, something to burn. And uh, he wanted to like listen to some of the songs. So we ended up going out to my car. I played him some of the songs, and he's like, "Dude, I'll you know, I'll sign your band right now. Like, don't even you know, don't even stress it." I'm like, "You made out for a little bit." Yeah, exactly. I'm like, you know, we we'd had a few drinks by then, so. <laughs> Sorry, but, uh, Scott. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. We ended up going to Lavish Studios in Burbank and uh, meeting Scott. And he basically had memorized one of my songs and basically sang it back to us. Uh, That's awesome. And this is a guy that sold like 30 million records. He was like, you know, singing a song that I wrote, you know, with these guys. And it, it was just, it was awesome. You know, it, it was one of the biggest things I'd ever experienced up to that point. That's very cool. Very cool. We started working at negotiations for a record deal uh, with Soft Drive Records, which was uh, one of, uh, basically Scott's record label. Yeah. Uh, it was an imprint uh, that he was distributing through Sony Red. Okay. Around that same time... It was uh, a contest, right? Or, or there was something that was happening, because I remember I was in New Jersey recording, mm -hmm. and you told me that there was something going on while all this was going on. He was looking for a singer. So you go to the website, you download uh, like Hemorrhage, which is one of their biggest songs. You How put, that uh, You put your lyrics on it. Can you sing it? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess we can't. We no, can't. We can't, we can't do, do that. Do that. Yeah. 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 Darn it! Yeah. Will you sing it off camera for me a little bit? Sure. Give me a little. Uh, can we make out afterwards? I downloaded uh, the song, put my lyrics on it, sent it back with the picture, mm. and uh, a couple weeks later, I got a notice that I was one of the. I guess out of like 1,200 people that had submitted worldwide, uh, I was one of the top 30. Nice. Uh, and the auditions were going to be held in Los Angeles. Did the auditions uh, in February of 06, mm -hmm. and literally. Uh, after four months uh, of auditioning processes and going through uh, everything, when all the dust cleared, I was the guy that was selected as the Fuel's lead singer. That is awesome. Let's start cooking. Yep. Um, and then we'll we'll keep going on with the saga because this this is a long, uh, long, fun story, and we're gonna tell all of it. But uh, we're gonna get cooking right now. So let's uh, let's reset everything. Um, snacky shackers, hang tight.